Welcome or welcome back everyone. If you've clicked on this video, that means you want to optimize your learning, figure out the best resources out there for med school, and find a good studying flow. In this video, I've put together all the different resources and websites that me and my colleagues have used to ace med school. The best way to reduce procrastination and study efficiently, in my opinion, is to have everything within hand, all the resources, all the apps, so that you're ready to jump back into studying and get into that study flow really quickly. If you're new to this channel, I'm Ala, a third year med student and your study buddy who shows you an unfiltered day in the life of a med student and also here and there drops some top tips and tricks to acing your studies. This video is also kindly sponsored by Scrintle who I'm going to be talking about a bit more later on in the video and I also have my code LULU10 for 10% off and there's going to be a link in the description box. So let's get straight into the video. So I like to keep things very simple and not overcomplicate them which makes it sustainable for long periods of time. I strongly believe in starting small and maintaining consistency rather than starting too big and then burning out quickly and not actually being able to keep up with the goals and plans that you set out. Especially now with it being the new year 2025, I think slowly optimizing your studies and your workflow in tiny little baby steps is the best way to have good study flow throughout the year and have efficiency in your work for long periods of time. So let's jump straight into notes. The first and the most important resource, the cornerstone of the past few years of med school, the resource that has changed the game for me and made me get way better grades with way less time and effort, and that is Anki. And I've already raved about it so much, if you've watched my other videos before, you'll see that almost the only way that I study for med school is through Anki. You can make your own cards, you can use pass me down cards from all the years, you can scroll through Anki web and try and find Anki cards from there and Anki decks that suit you and your course. I've made a video before on how I study in med school and with that I included a big section on how I make my Anki cards and I touched on whether I take notes or how I transfer my notes to Anki etc. And I'm going to link that video in the description box and it's also going to be up here and I'm also going to link some other videos that I found really helpful for Anki. But if you don't know about Anki, where have you been? But I'll give you a really like small overview of Anki. It's basically a flashcard app and it has many different card types like for example the basic card which is answer question, it has closed cards which are fill in the blank in a sentence and you also have fill in the blank in images called image occlusion cards and there's so many different add-ons and settings that you can change to adapt it to your learning. Two cornerstone things that Anki is based on is active recall which is essentially you actively studying, you actively checking if you remember a certain item or a certain keyword and then the second thing is space repetition. Now the next best resource is something that I don't think people talk about enough but it's actually so so helpful and it's hand-me-down notes. I started using them more this year compared to last year and first year and they've made such a big difference in optimizing my studying and making it so that I have notes ready that are summarized from all the years. I mentioned before that I like to make my own Anki but when it comes to notes, concise notes, instead of just using like your lectures for information, hand-me-down notes are so useful and I am sure that whatever university you go to there will be some older year student that has passed down some notes or has passed down some Anki, any form of revision material that has been passed down is so helpful because these students know your curriculum the most, they know what's coming in the exam, they've been there, done that, and then they've given you their resources. The third resource, and when I say this is so 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 useful, and I don't know how people before it came out lived, and that's ChatGPT, like I really don't know how med students before ChatGPT were able to get through med school and like understand and comprehend information. When I say Anki is my best friend in med school, ChatGPT is like its twin. I never do Anki without having a split screen of Anki and ChatGPT. And it's very, very helpful in trying to understand things. I'm thinking of doing a video on all the different prompts and questions I asked ChatGPT and the ways that it's really helpful for med school and then also outside of med school. But what I like to do is to ask it a basic question and then go and ask it more questions from different angles so that I make sure that I understood the topic in like the most whole way possible. So I would ask it like, tell me about this condition and then I'd say okay so why exactly does it cause a symptom and I would just ask it so many different questions from different angles. Understanding is the core to memorizing so ChatGPT guys definitely start making use of it if you haven't already. Now moving on to Scrintle, the sponsor of this video and I think this is the perfect time to talk about it because we've just finished talking about ChatGPT and Scrintle's newest feature is the AI Assistant. Overall I'm just going to start by talking about the newest updates that Scrintle has done to their software. So if you look at the starting page you can already see that there are many differences. If you've watched my previous video on how I study for med school you can see that the board here is 
at the bottom instead of being at the left. We also have new items called blocks. So this is the welcome to Scrintel page, it's getting started. And this is sort of your desk. Your desk, you can style in any way, you can structure in any way, and it's an infinite canvas. So you can have many different thoughts, there are many different projects, or it can even be like a daily planner, etc. There's many different templates I'm gonna explore briefly that Scrintel has ready for you as well. Now, if you look at your board, there's a brief outline of what you can do and how you can get started. You can create a text block, you can merge them, you can turn them into documents. And documents are essentially stored in your library so you can search them at any time. So let me show you some boards that I've done. So these are some of my notes for musculoskeletal, some of the main conditions that we learn. As you can see, I have a lot of place to just play around, add so many different conditions and then you can also have pdf notes all the different conditions that are covered you can open this around play with it make it bigger make it smaller then so here this is a board and i've put in three boards that i've made as well and then these are documents i'm going to go into one of the boards let's go into sle we've opened sle here you can see the sle overview the board that I've made for SLE and then I also have images so the nice thing about boards which I'm going to cover now is that they're very versatile you can make a simple text board right here so I can just say hi so you have so many other things that you can play around with like uploading files youtube videos pdfs images you also have templates that Scrintel has available so either a task for example here we can have a task and this is sort of a document with task titles so that you can search it up later in the library I did the management of these conditions as separate documents because I want to be able to easily search them also have another board here another board that's hiding and it's this board. So this is what I was talking about with ChatGPT and with different AI assistants about the importance of understanding why certain things occur. So I love understanding symptoms and I just started by writing every single system of the symptoms and how they present. And then I made use of the AI assistant. So as you can see here, we have some random boards on questions. So I basically went to the AI assistant, put in the board, so you can simply just like literally, all you need to do is just drag a board and that's it it adds it to the ai and then you can say ask me a question on it it gave me these questions which are quite good and they were basically active recall questions i wanted questions more based on cases because that's how we're examined so i asked it please make case-based questions these are the sle symptoms and it gave me case-based questions this is amazing for clinical scenarios this button you just go back to the previous page. I can then search in the library anything. So for example, it was management, management for RA. Another function that was also really helpful if you do a lot of collaborative work and making ideas, and if you have a business idea and you're kind of brainstorming, it's really helpful the search function as well here. You can filter based on tags, you can filter based on user if you have multiple users in one board, and you can filter based on data as well. The thing I really like about Scrintel as well is that it's not just like a studying resource, it's a mix of everything. You can organize it and lay it out in a way that you can benefit from every single aspect of it. For example, brainstorming, if you have any business project, any ideas that you want, if you even want to like organize your week, organize your study timetable, it's all in there in one place. So that's my overview of Scrintel. I would definitely recommend you guys check it out. I put the link in the description box and I have my code for 10% off as well if you want to try it out. Now let's move on to the next point. Okay so now we've covered the note-taking aspect of the video with all the different resources that I use. Let's move on to resources that are out there on the internet ready for you to use and either take notes of or learn from etc. We're first going to start with websites that I found really helpful that have medicine notes written down nicely and simplified. In the past two years, I mainly used two websites, Teach Me Anatomy and Teach Me Physiology. And I'm going to show you now how Teach Me Anatomy looks. So this is Teach Me Anatomy. For example, here I have the heart open and it will just cover all the anatomy. It has all the different nerves and all the different supplies, the neck, the thorax. So it's really very comprehensive and I like that they have their own images. All their images are in their own style, drawn, highlighted, so it's really clear and really nice to learn from. And then the next one is the same company but Teach Me Physiology. It will just focus on histology, things like cardiovascular, so the cardiac cycle, RESP, you have GI, gastric acid production, so it covers all the preclinical content. I knew Teach Me Anatomy was a thing but I didn't know Teach Me Physiology was a thing until second year, so I'm telling you earlier now. So. 
if you're going into first year medicine, this is amazing. Another resource as well that is amazing is digital histology. It gives you the basic understanding of histology, all the different systems. As you can see here, it's going to cover the cells, the tissues, the systems, and it covers them in such nice detail. It's sectioned really nicely. It will go through every section and it has like an explanation right here. After going through every section in like a drawing, it would then give you like histology slide. And there's so many different images that you can get, different magnifications as you can see here. You also have like a smaller image here. So it just helps you visualize histology way more and I genuinely think this saved my life in histology so I would definitely say make use of this website. I would also recommend finding textbooks that work for you. For example I love the Rohan's anatomy textbook. It's like an anatomy textbook and it just has so many cadaveric images and they're all labeled and because I have the digital copy I would just like cover over the labels and then write over them and then check if I'm correct or not. Okay moving on to the next section. So question marks are really important. As I mentioned, Anki does active recall, and then you also need to apply the knowledge and questions for it to actually stick in your brain. So the first one is PassMed. PassMed is really well known. It's very, very helpful in consolidating your knowledge and applying your knowledge. If I quickly show you you can basically filter through any questions that you want. My favorite thing about PassMed, especially in clinical now, is it has a textbook. You can find all the different systems and their notes for clinical years, for example, they're amazing. That's what I'm almost primarily using to study nowadays. It's based on the MLA exam for the UK. Now, another resource that I also really like is Quesmed. Okay, so this is what Quesmed looks like. You have a question bank and then they also do an OSCE. I personally didn't use Quesmed for preclinical, but I've heard of a lot of my colleagues who used it and found it really helpful. So I think try the free trials. These are the questions, as you can see, a lot of different questions and for each module as well, so it's really helpful. I also have a code for Quesmed, so I have a 10% off discount if you wanna give it a try. The code is LULU10. Finally, for question banks, we have Spotamed. So Spotamed is amazing because I think it was made by a BARTS alumni, and so it's really helpful for BARTS students, but I do know other students from different unis that use it and really like it as well. And it has a month free trial, so you can try the questions and see how it is before you pay. It's mainly just anatomy and histology. I would recommend you save it a bit to closer to exam time because they don't have that many questions. Questions, but the questions are really helpful and it's also section based on different systems as well. Now moving on to the final section and that is YouTube channels. The first channel that I'm going to talk about and this channel has carried me through med school. It has carried me through my preclinical years and that is Ninja Nerd. Ninja Nerd, like I love that man so much. Any physiology lecture that I had at uni and then I was struggling to understand it, I would just go home straight away and watch one of his hour long videos and come out of it feeling like all the information just magically entered my brain and makes sense. So I think you should definitely try Ninja Nerd. Don't let the long videos put you off. There are also some other channels out there. So for example, I used Osmosis quite a bit because they have really short videos if you want like a really quick summary of something. And I also use Geeky Medics a lot. So Geeky Medics are an OSCE resource for med school. Usually all of their OSCE videos like follow the exact same guidelines that unis follow for their OSCE examinations. They also have a website and they also do med school notes as well, so check that out, but they're an amazing resource. That's it for my top medical school resources. I hope that you found this helpful and that using these resources and finding the best things that work for you will help in making your study flow way easier in 2025. If this video provided any help, I am so happy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye.